Hello and welcome to today's video where we'll talk about using shared preferences to save data in Android Studio. And this is going to be the easy way to save data in your applications. And as always, I'll start by showing you what we'll build today. This is going to be a very simple app. We simulate basically every, every app available that will have a username and a password to uh, protect its content and to allow you to log in. And this is what you will basically see when you log in inside an, uh, such an app. You will have a uh, activity asking for your username and your password, and you have the login button. Of course, some other functionalities might be available, but this should be the basics. And uh, once the user enters the username and the password and clicks login, it will go inside the app and do whatever the app does. However, if you use this application multiple times and you always have to type in username, password, username, password, it might get tiresome at uh, some time. So uh, there is this option, click to save login info. If the user will click this button, this checkbox, then the next time the user will open the application, this information will be auto-populated. It will be taken from the memory where it has been saved and auto-completed. The user can just press the login button and access the application. So this is what we'll do today. Uh, let's go to Android Studio and see how the code actually looks and how it executes. We'll start as always by opening Android Studio. And once the project is loaded and you will create a new project, empty activity. So once that project will be loaded, you will see something like this on the screen. You'll have in the left side your project folder with files and folders which are included in your project, but we don't use this for now, so I can just minimize it. And then you have two files. You have the main activity Java file where we will put the main code of our project. And then you have the activity main XML file where we have the code associated to the user interface, but you don't actually have to write this code which you can see here. You can use the design mode if you want, and this is going to allow you to just drag and drop different controls and uh, modify their attributes. Okay, so let's start by creating the user interface of this application. And I can create it really quickly, and then I will just explain what I've done because I've done several videos on user interfaces, so there's no need for me to go step by step and teach you this. Okay, so let's build it. The user interface is now finished and it is quite simple and I will walk you through what I've done. So I've started by taking two plain texts. This is from text here, from the text tab, plain text. So these are edit text boxes and I've uh, configured them in such a way as to delete the text. You have only a hint showing you what you have to enter, the username and the user input. I've changed uh, the size of the text, of course, I've set the text to be aligned centrally. Then I've selected the constraints because we are inside a constraint layout. So we have uh, the horizontal constraints and at least one vertical constraint. And this is enough. Oh, by the way, let me show you the IDs. Uh, the first one is called edit text user, ed user. And the second one is called edit text. So et pass. Okay, this is a little typo I have, edit text, et. The IDs are important because later on in the main code, we will reference these controls using their IDs. So this is the part where the user will input its information. So we will collect from this to edit text. Then you have this checkbox and this checkbox is called CB from checkbox remember user. When we will click this, the user will be remembered. It will be saved. This is why the text says, click to save login information. And I haven't done too much for this one. I just selected the constraints all around, changed the text size, all from the attributes, and that's it. For the button, this is a simple button, which has, again, the constraints selected, the text size increased, 
And you see this red exclamation mark. This is because we have the onClick method defined. However, it's not yet implemented in the main code. And by this, I mean that in the attributes of this item, we have this onClick attribute. And for the onClick attribute, we gave this name, onClick login. And this is something that I've typed in, and this will be the name of the method which will be executed when this button is pressed. So we explicitly indicated what to execute when we press the button. Okay, let's go to the main activity Java file, and this is where we will put the main code of the program. And we'll start by some uh, variables. We'll declare some variables. Okay, so uh, right now I should show you what I have here. I have the variables declared, so I'll just, I stopped here because I wanted to explain some things before I move on. So I start with the edit text and I just give some names for uh, whatever variables I want to use in this code. So et user, et pass. I use the same uh, names as I assigned to the controls in the user interface, but you can choose other names if you want to. And this, uh, this part over here, we need to declare the shared preferences. So for the shared preferences, make sure you choose the Android content one. And you can give whatever name you, you like. And I say, my saved data. And then we also need an editor. So we say again the shared preferences. This time we say dot editor. And this is the one that we chose. I wanted for you to see this. And we can give it a name. And I usually go with something similar to the one before. So it's my saved data editor. OK, this is all we have to do when it comes to the variable part. Now we have to go inside the onCreate method, which will be executed when we open the app. And here we have to reference the controls from the user interface. I'll go quickly over this part because it's something you've done several times before. Until this point, as I've said before, we've just used find view by ID to reference the controls from the user interface. And we have the variable which we have declared above. And then we have the association with the ID from the user interface. And uh, I use the same name, but you can have different names if you choose to. Uh, you can just select this from the list which appears as you are typing resource.id. Then the list will appear and you can reference the control. And then you have the checkbox. Then we have to create this shared preference file. And what we do, we get the shared preference and we indicate this name of a file. And you can put whatever name you want here. And this will be the file where your saved preferences will be saved. And this is going to be an XML file. And then you have the mode to operate. And the mode private means that only this application will have access to your file, to your preferences. And which is a bit interesting, uh, considering the fact that it's called shared preferences. However, we don't want to share it with anybody because uh, we will save here our username and password for the application. And then because you want to edit, you need to have this editor, which we declared above. And then we just say it's my shared, I'm sorry, my saved data dot edit. OK, this part should be clear by now. What we have to do, we have to move on and write the code associated to the button, to the login button. This should be enough for the on-click button. And what we've done, we have this checkbox, remember user, and we check. So when the button is pressed, when we press the button, we check if this checkbox is checked or not. So sorry for checking so many things. And then you have to go inside and execute this code if the checkbox is checked. So if we want the user to be remembered, then uh, we have this my saved data editor. And it will put a string which will be uh, labeled or will have the key user assigned to it. And the value associated to this key will be taken from the edit text user, 
with get text and convert it to string. Okay, so let me show you here. We have this edit text. Inside there will be something typed by the user, the username. It will be a string of, I don't know, some name that the user will have. And we take from this edit text, we get the content and then we convert it to a string. And this string we put inside the memory. And this is why we use this saved data editor. So we take for this to uh, edit text, the content, and we put it inside the memory associated with some key because this is only a key value pair in both cases. Then we move on and uh, we have this checkbox. And for the checkbox, which is true, if we are inside this part of the if condition, we save this state as well in remember user in this key. And then we commit to these actions. In case the checkbox is not checked, so the user doesn't want to have the information saved, then we just save this part which says the user doesn't want to be saved and we remember the option of the user. We need this because when we first load the program over here, when the application loads inside the onCreate method, uh, we want to populate the uh, username and the password automatically if the previous time the application was used, the user clicked to have this information remembered. So let's implement this part as well. This should complete our code. And uh, what we've done, when the application is loaded inside the onCreate method, after we associate the controls and after we instantiate these shared preferences and so on, what we have to do, we have to check if the previous time the application was opened, if the user selected or not to have his information remembered. We have to go inside the saved data file. We have to get a Boolean and the Boolean is the one associated to the remember user key. And in case nothing is there, we'll just assign a default value, which is false. In case the user clicked remember me before, this value remember user will be true. And this condition here will be satisfied, will be true. And then we can uh, get the information from the file. So the information associated with the user and the password, and we can populate it inside the text views, uh, the edit text. So the user doesn't have to type it uh, once again. Okay, let's see how the application will look. While the emulator will load, let me just uh, explain this part because I think I jumped over it and I didn't explain. This toast message is included inside the onClick method. So when the user clicks the button uh, to have the login operation being executed, uh, we check to see if the username and password will be saved or not. And after that, we display this toast message. And this toast message will only say uh, login in progress. And after that, it will disappear because normally this is the part where you will have the actual code that does the login being uh, executed. However, this is just an example to show you how to save data in your shared preferences. So there's no need to implement any login code. Uh, even so, I've just added this toast message. If you don't know what a toast message is, if you don't know how to use it, uh, check my previous videos. You will find the link in the description of this video and it will explain exactly what's the deal with these toast messages. Uh, if you already know, then just insert one and you can uh, animate your application a bit. Okay, so apparently the emulator is loading. Let's see, this is our app. I'll zoom in a bit. And as you can see, we have username password being requested. Let's type a, B, C for the username and the password will be something very, very secure, one, two, three. And we click login. As you can see, login in progress, there's this toast message. And now let's close the application. Okay, we have closed the app. When we open it next time, let's see where it is, this one. Okay, the username and the password have not been saved. However, if this time I say ABC, let's say ABCD, and another secure password of one, two, three, four. Okay, and then we say save the information. Now, when I press login, again, there is some login code being executed, whatever needs to be done. 
However, this time when I close the app, and then when I open it again, you will see that our information has been saved and the user doesn't have to enter the username and the password again. It can just go ahead and log in and use the application or whatever the application will do. So this is how you use shared preferences. I hope you've learned something new today. I hope I've managed to explain it so that you can understand and use it in your future projects. Until we meet in the next videos, keep learning, keep practicing and take care. See you next time.